the veil of darkness, the paranormal, spiritual, and comedic abound. Welcome to the Richard Spazoff Show. The Richard Spassoff Show is brought to you by Audible. You can find us on our website at the Psychic Medium Spassoff Show dot com. Also, the Richard Spassoff Podcast is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. Available for you on Android and coming soon iDevices. To get all of the great stuff and more from the Richard Spassoff Show, please check out hcuniversalnetwork.com. I also would like to give a big thank you to the other networks we're on. RU Radio Network. A big thanks to David Ruleever. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that name correctly. As well as a big thank you to TalkStream Live for bringing us aboard their website, Tom and Bill. Thank you, everybody. Coming up next is a PSA for the keepersofthewild.org. Hi, I'm Betty White. Keepers of the Wild is a nonprofit animal sanctuary that specializes in rescuing and caring for these wonderful creatures. The founder, Jonathan Kraft, and these wild animals have established a loving bond. To watch them interact is fascinating, and it's an experience you'll never forget. The staff and volunteers have dedicated their lives to give these animals a new start and a home where they can live out their lives in dignity. They also provide the community and children with an educational program where you can learn and help preserve our precious wildlife and the environment that we must all share. So listen to the call of the wild and support Keepers of the Wild, a truly fine organization. You could find their website at keepersofthewild.org. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk Entertainment. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Hello there, and welcome to the Richard Spassoff Show. I'm happy to have my guest tonight, Troy Griffin. He's a psychic, oh, he's a Christian psychic medium. I am as well, and it's nice to be having a conversation with the same type of person. Hello there. (laughs) Hello there, and I agree. It's nice to have a conversation with, with somebody like me. (laughs) <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> that's, that's kind of strange, that's somebody like me. Somebody like you, yeah. You know, how do you, uh, okay, the first quite question that we always get asked is being a Christian, they say, oh, it's an oxymoron. How do you define that? Well, that's, you just go right for the nail on the head, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, uh, we do get asked that a lot. And really how I define find that is, um, for me personally, um, I don't find it that way because when I read biblical scripture, the Old Testament is law to me. The New Testament gives us grace and talks about using our gifts and that we all have them, we should all use them. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have prophets in the Bible. If I was to go around and say I was a prophet, you know, people would want to, you know, run from me, hide from me. (laughs) Yeah, Uh I know. I I thought about that, too. I go, hmm. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, so it's it's a uh, it, it's it's like okay, so how do I express who I am? But really, what it comes down to um, is I, I explain it just that way, and um, you know, it's the gifts that were given me to help others to make a difference. Um, and so, if people don't understand that, 
or they have a, you know, don't believe, it's okay. It's what God made me personally, just like you and everybody else. I've just chose to come out and use them in a positive manner. Yep, I understand. Same way, and I have worked uh, for a cu couple years, like at a sing singles party doing re readings for all the women, right? Besides my dance. Mm -hmm. um, but... One woman just got so mad that I was there. And mm -hmm. I had to be pa patient with her and not be mean back. You know, I, I said, I'm sorry if, if this offend, offends you. I go, would you like to talk about it? Well, I opened a bag of worms right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, you did. Yes. But, but I showed her God's love. Yes. I did. I did. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying... I should have should have just handed her a bag of nails and brought in the crucifix. It would have been easier. Mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been there too, uh, more so. You know, I've, of course, we're so much like each other. I've been there too. You know, mine comes usually with ministers or people, mm -hmm. um, man of God. They say they are. Um, that's where my I open up the can of worms. Um, in the sense that um, when people find out what I do, uh, a lot of pastors, ministers, etc., um, they want to tell me and inform me that they're going to help me find God. And you already um, have God. And I have God. So when I go back and say, well, why don't you come see what I really do so you know that they're gifts from God, mm -hmm. you know, then the whole spiritual warfare comes out against me. And... Um, you know, that's the whole bag of worms that I open up, which is okay, because I think it's something they need to think about, it's something mm -hmm. they need to read about. But in my bag of worms, and I don't know if you've had this, uh, you know, it really comes down most of the time where where I'm not going to knock anybody, but people are very smart at what they do, but they're not so smart in the common world, common sense world, without here. So a lot of times when I get to really strong religious people, it comes down to that they don't want to know what we do, and and I have to look at that as being a form of ignorance. Yes, um, and and I had some though. I got to say, I worked with a lot of priests doing mm -hmm. exorcisms, or not doing them. I should say, advising what I felt, only because they it took me a while to for them to understand me. They were mm -hmm. o open enough, and there were some ministers I met that were open enough, but the ones that did not like me would try to run, you know, mi mm -hmm. millions of miles away from me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and my thing I, I explain to a lot of people is that, um, you know, when that happens to me, the religious leaders are supposed to be um, ministering all of God's people, and I'm one of God's people, but yet you want to run from me without listening or seeing what I do, what we do, and that, you know, there is a dark side to this, of course, like anything, yes. dark side to religion, but we are on the light side, the positive side, the love side. Um, so it's really putting them into to an ignorant state where they're not willing to see or view or hear. Um, and that's where I always get the bag of worms. Uh, you've been through this before. You just know what, you know, being intuitive like we are and being empathic, we feel others' emotions. It's like we know when we see that one person, we know, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's going to start. I mean, it's, 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 um, and it could be very nerve wracking if you're not in the right state of mind to, to deal with this. It's, um, what am I trying to say? It's just not, we're, okay, for an example, I was stuck in Louisiana for, uh, for about two weeks, okay, because of a flood. I lost, I lost my car, lost my computers, I was doing some comedy up there, I lost my act and my dig, 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 dig. Dignity as well, if I could speak. <laughs> I just need a hammer here. But no, when, when I was up there, um, 
once people found out what I did, they were ready to hang me. Yes, I've been in one of those situations too. Yes. Yeah, yes. and and I realized what God told me to do is keep my mouth shut um, mm. and show them, you know, show, show them the love that we have. And it did calm them down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it, it was a tough one for two weeks or what, what I should say a week within the hotel about about five days within this um, uh, auditorium where we slept on the floor not easy mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Yeah. and and there wow. there was always good people and we helped save some people in the sense of drowning but right. I got very sick from it so I know you 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 understand what I'm saying here it's, absolutely yeah absolutely I do what what got you started being why did you choose this line of line of work or did it choose you i should say <laughs> yeah actually it chose me um so i knew i was intuitive well i shouldn't say I knew so in my sixth grade camp i knew what people were going to say or do or what was going to happen and it would and in sixth grade i just chalked it up to be in everybody could do it um, now, granted, I went to sixth grade on, a, on an island called Orcas Island in the San Juan Islands. So it's pretty sheltered living on an island, but yeah. I just thought everybody could do it. Um, and then as I got older, really, not till high school, um, people would ask me questions and I would know the answer. Or I knew I was going to fail this or do that. It just came so natural. I never trained for it, um, really didn't look into the word psychic, um, not my favorite word, didn't really look yeah. into it. So, <laughs> I agree. <Yes. laughs> you know, when I was 18, um, I have a mother from another mother here in California when I lived in um, Colorado, and I would come out and visit three, four times a year, um, for about a year until I moved out here in the 80s, and she would send home these books with me about how to develop your psychic gifts or your psychic abilities. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I don't know what the heck she's talking about, but I'm not taking these books with me. So I would stop at the rental car place, and I would put them in the trash can. Um, I have admitted to her 35 years later. I did tell her I threw them away. (laughs) So we're good there. (laughs) But um, And I knew some psychics that that did some phone readings and stuff, but I just never, I guess, appealed to me. Um, And it was nothing religious, nothing. uh, It just never was my calling at that point. Okay. So, uh, forward ahead, I'm 40 years old. I stop at a friend's gift shop close to the house, and uh, I know that she reads cards, which is fine. I had to read mine once, and, you know, it wasn't very good, but that's neither here or there. And uh, But she had a certain type of card that my wife liked, and it was our anniversary, so I stopped in to pick up an anniversary card, and a uh, little chit chat, and a friend of hers came in, and she introduced me to her friend, and I said hello. And her friend looked at me and asked if I was a psychic. Um, and I have no idea. It was God, obviously, that pushed me just to say yes with no hesitation. Right, right. Um, and I said yes. And then, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking, what the heck did I just, <laughs> I what did I just say? What did I just do? Am I crazy? Um, I don't know anything about this world. So um, she said, well, I'm working on a case for the Bronx Police Department, and I'm wondering if I can just get your thoughts and feelings and your intuition on it. I said, yeah, sure, why not? Um, so she told me the name of the missing person and when she was missing. And I said to her, I go, why are you calling this a missing person when she's dead? Yeah. And the intuitive, and again, it's hard to find real intuitive. So, um, you know, at that point, I don't know if she was or she wasn't. And I said, I said, because she's dead. And uh, she said, well, if you think she's dead, what happened? And it just came to me so natural, like this conversation, that I just told her, hit with a pipe. He doesn't work for a pipe company construction in his crawl space. There's another person involved, the color of the truck. Um, And then where I thought, you know, I I said to her, I said, well, there's got to be some vacant lots by his mom's house. This was in the Bronx, and mom lives on Long Island. Never been to New York before. And I said, I just feel like there's vacant lots around there. And um, about 
oh, six, seven weeks later, uh, the gal from the, my friend from the store called up and she said, I have to tell you that you blew that case out of the water. I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, my friend went back to the Bronx Police Department and gave him all this information, which they had in the police file, most of it, except for the lots. Um, and she told him that you were the one that gave her this information. I said, oh, okay, well, that's nice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't know where it came from, but that's nice. Um, so then time came by, and I had a vision of a missing girl back in North Carolina. Right. And I just went on the computer, and I just pulled Missing Girl North Carolina, and it was just presented to me. I went through Google Maps. Um, I posted a few things, got positive feedback. I was very accurate on that case. So I went back over to the the card shop, the, and I said to my friend, I said, hey, you won't believe what happened. I worked on this other case, blah, 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 blah. And I said... I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, so I'm going to go ahead and pray on it. I've got to think about what the family's going to say. You know, I I just, but I wanted to let you know I worked on another one and I was good. And she said, well, I'm glad you worked on another one because my friend that was in here and told the Bronx about you doesn't want to work with her anymore. And uh, I asked if she wanted to work on any other cases with you, and she said, no, she doesn't want anything to do with you. Why? I, and I said, well, why is that? And she said, because you blew her case that she was telling the police was a missing person into a murder case. Yeah, but and, you you helped out the situation, which was where it was supposed to be. But we know that people have their egos. Yeah, and, yes, yes, yes. You know? And so for me, it was fine. I just met her, right? So <laughs> it, it bothered me that, yeah, I I didn't do anything to try to hurt anybody. I just... You know, heck, I don't even know where it came from. It just came out. Um, And so that's really where I spent about another month soul-searching and praying and talking to my wife, who's actually a preacher's daughter, and said, I don't know where it comes from. I believe it's a gift from God, and that um, I really really want to do this. Um, And so that's how I started it. And that's been, oh boy, 14, uh, I mean, dated myself 14 years ago. <laughs> I, I, I got to tell you, you've been doing this for a long time. Same here with me, pro, I don't know, 30 years for me. You started off uh, when I was teaching the mafia's wives how to dance. They would usually have me give readings to their husbands. Mm-hmm. So it was a inter- resting ray to in- intervene with the people. People and I felt comfortable, but what I did not feel comf- comfortable with was the new age. Mm-hmm. I just did not feel I went to a new age school to get my HHP, okay? And mm-hmm. the energy there was just so, I want to say, e- evil in some cases. Not necessarily mm-hmm. the people being e- evil, but the energy of new age and how it could destroy it brings up a credit i'm probably gonna have a lot of people pissed at me but it it brings (laughs) up (laughs) when they say the power within them it's not within them it's within god where i come from Uh, right but uh, there's good and bad in everybody i know that but how did you deal with that kind of environment with the new age well here's where i've been blessed in the sense that i agree with you i'm not into the new age Mm -hmm. but i haven't mm, put myself or been put in a position to really deal with that okay um First, of all, I have to go back because yeah, I have my mafia clients too, and you and I have, to have <laughs> yeah. a private conversation about those. But um, you, you know, I um, I've always been pretty quiet because really I'm an introvert, um, so I don't put myself out into a lot of things, and I never been to a development class lectures. Yeah, yeah. So for me. That hasn't affected me. I don't really like a lot that's there, but I haven't um, put myself into any of that. Um, so I've kind of just been the quiet one doing things on my own. Well, with me, I kind of got thrown into it because 
I was doing massage. It wasn't because mm-hmm. of the read, read, readings. Mm-hmm. I was getting my massage license and my dance. I was doing dance ther- therapy at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I was getting that that license just as a background, as an HHP. Mm-hmm. And I had mm-hmm. to be in that environment, which did not make me feel com- com- comfortable. Oh, me, ne- me neither. Yeah. Me neither. I, I, you know. Yeah, go 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 ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, you know what I was going to say is that for me personally, I, I I have a Reiki master's license. So I get a little bit about it, but for me, um, my biggest thing with the metaphysical or other people that say they're intuitive is maybe I'm jaded, but I don't believe a lot of people. Yeah, I agree with you. Yes, um, and so. Don't tell me who you are, but show me what you've done. And so um, I kind of distance myself from that whole world. Yeah. Um, and that's just kind of, that's just me. Just me. It, it's just, I agree with you, but sometimes in my world it comes to me, but I deal with it in love. But sometimes it's not easy to deal with a, a fakeness or a facade that the, some of these new age people have. Like, for an example, I taught Louise Hayes dance, okay? Mm-hmm. And I have a let, let letter from her. She was nice to work with, but we de- definitely both had different viewpoints. But mm-hmm. we love to dance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yes. <laughs> so we had something common there that we could share mm-hmm. and enjoy each other. But it's fun- funny sometimes how God brings you into a situation where, you know, what am I doing here when mm-hmm. I don't even believe in what these people do or, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, well, I have an analogy on that, um, and I explain this a lot of times to clients. So if we think about that our life is a pie, so you're baking your favorite pie, cherry, apple minus cherry. So I'm building a cherry pie, uh, baking a cherry pie. And so what happens is people are brought into my pie that's bringing an ingredient that I may need or I'm in their pie for exactly. an ingredient they yes. may need. Yes. And that doesn't mean that I want that ingredient forever. Maybe the sugar is getting too sweet or it's starting to burn then I don't want that anymore. So all of us have these pies that we're baking, and people I look at people as an ingredient. So sometimes I don't know why they're in my pie or I'm in their pie, but it's something that one of us or both of us needs. Yes. And, and it's what we learn from that, why they're part of our pie is what's the most important thing. Exactly, and, and sharing the love within, with, mm-hmm. with each other, sure. right? In that sense. That's right. And on a uncondit- additional base bases and i know god put us together so it's faith absolutely <laughs> you know and I, I don't and i again we're also human so we need one and need that connection mm-hmm. um you know so for me just like you and you said it's okay if you believe in things that i don't yeah Do we have a commonality and of course really what i'm looking for when i meet people is really who is their energy? Who are they from the soul? Yes, same here. Yes, if they're a good disagree. spirit. Yep, yep. That's right. We may disagree on things, which is normal, but who are you inside? Exactly, and I know, like you said, you worked with the, with the mob. You're talking about a evil situation, but there may not be bad people. Right. Can you tell us well, some of your experience with that, or or what you were going to say? I'm sorry. My experience with the mob or bad people? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you a very interesting story about me dealing with the mob in a television um, shoot I did. Um, so, like you, I've read for people in the mafia. Um, I've had people in the mafia come to me trying to get revenge or dirt or um, things against other people, which I absolutely will not do. Um, plain and simple, if that's what you're here to see me for, then I'm not the right person. Yep. yep. But um, a little story is I, um, the producers of the Long Island Medium 
had approached me about following me on my work. And so I agreed to do a pilot. And they brought me to a house in Staten Island, which is an old um, 1800, 1900, built in the 1900s from a brick manufacturer named Kreiser, who actually built most of Staten Island, very wealthy in the day. And they brought me out there for 2014 Mafia hit. Oh, jeez. And, um, you know, when you think about Mafia, now, I know people in the Mafia, but I didn't really... I don't know. It's so quiet anymore, per se, especially on the West Coast where I'm at, that I really don't think about Mafia every day or, you know, every year. So I go out there for a 2014 Mafia hit, and it was so surreal that it really hit me in the face again that this Mafia is still really prevalent. And, um, And talk about evil. So the story goes that there was a couple um, soldiers which um, you know are hitmen or mm-hmm. the killers. Exactly, the, yes, yes. Yeah. And um, they had a guy that wanted to be part of the mafia, but he was a big mouth, and he went around town and talked a lot. Not good. And so one night, uh, these, these, um, these soldiers mm-hmm. called him up, who he thought were their friends, and said, hey, why don't you come over and drink with us, grab some beers? He said, okay. They were caretaking this mansion, this old mansion that's haunted, and um, he came over and they um, walked in the side door and they started going after him with knives and and stabbing him. He made it outside the side door and there were two other men there that actually put him into a pond and drowned him. And uh, and I don't want to go too graphic, but then they... um, um, no, you can go ahead. Ma- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they took him to the back shed and called the mafia boss and said, hey, what do we do with him? And the mafia boss said, dismember him and put his parts in the furnace. Okay. Um, and that's where you come into real evil. Yes, yes, uh, yes. And um, it was very tough for me to be there, not just on an intuitive level, but on... Um, on all planes, all levels. Um, so that's where you really see evil. Um, it's purposeful. There's, yep, yep, yeah, very mm-hmm. bad. Yeah, the the source was there. Yes, and yeah, the devil was there. Yes, um, hands down. And you know, I always pray. Uh, before I do readings or work on an investigation or go on site. But I tell you there, I prayed all night long, every day I was there. I mean, all day, all night, I would send my prayers all along um, just because of the pure evil there. And um, it was tough. It was tough. Now, this was a, a set that you were called to to begin with, or? Yeah, it was, it was a, a location. So the pilot was, um, I had a female detective with me. Okay. And we a real detective. In. Not a, okay, okay. A real female, yeah, a real okay. homicide detective okay. um, out of Chicago. And we were investigating this mafia hit um, where two guys are in prison for it. Um, and that was supposed to be kind of the, the trailer. Um, it was with Dick Wolf productions who right. uh, does lot order who was going to do a scripted side to it so they recreated the scene and stuff um so the way that i work and the way that i worked on this show is don't tell me where i'm going because i don't want any preconceived ideas yeah. i don't want to see anything just tell me what airport i'm going to um but what happens to me is when i get close to things that are evil i have a hard time breathing and i also get sick to the point where um I do lose my cookies. It's it gets me to that point, and this was one of those places where, probably a mile before there, I had to stop, I had to breathe, I had to compose myself. Um, it was just very tough, very tough. But you know, that's the work I do in general. Um, unsolved murder cases. It's a lot of evil. Very um, much, yeah. Too very dark. Hmm. But the thing that protects me and keeps me going is that I know I have God's light 
around me and with me. And, um, you know, I have to go into the darkness to bring out the truth. Yes. The light. Um, but I definitely cannot do it without my religious belief system. I cannot do it. Can no. Do it. No. Mm -hmm. No, there's no way exactly without God. No, we'd be, we'd be eaten up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, and people ask that. I'm sure they ask you a lot, how do we deal with it? And, um, you know, over years, like you, it becomes our normal, and we have dealt with it. But I deal with it because I have God's grace with me, and um, and that's how I deal with it. You walk in grace, yes. And yes, I do. You have to, even though people don't understand that, but simply, Simply, with all your work you do, you simply just call in God. I mean, pe some people understand it. and it, mm -hmm. it, It's just, what I'm trying to say is, it, it just took my breath away because I understand what you're saying. And mm -hmm. when there's that much darkness, there's a lot of, if, if you got to protect yourself, as you know, if you don't pray, you're not going to be able to protect yourself. So... Yes, and I wish all your listeners will really take that in, because that's in life in general, um, Very much. not just what we do. But a lot of people don't understand, don't care. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not here to judge anybody, but right. there's a lot of people that really need to take what you said and incorporate it in their lives. And they could talk to God, like me and you are talking, and he'll and answer you back, right? Just Absolutely. You know, I don't know about you, but one thing that I always tell people, and it's really the spiritual plane you're on, I'm sure you're going to have the experiences that I have, where I actually have walked with Jesus, sat on a bench with him, just like it's my real life, um, and had have conversations with him. Does it happen all the time? No, no. of course not. But I have had those one-on-one -on -one conversations, um, and I, you know, I they just happen. Um, yeah, we 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 don't. When we get called, I've been God showed me what he heaven was like, and one time what mm -hmm. hell was like, and mm -hmm. on both of those, and then there was times where I have talked to God, like what what you said, and uh, when I was little from about maybe four years old to all the way 12 years old. I would talk to him. He would talk back to me. I would see him because mm -hmm. I had a health condition. So mm -hmm. at that time, I wasn't thinking about it being a psychic medium. It's just the way life was. Mm -hmm. And he's, right. as you know, he's very much, he's, he's near us all times, no matter where we are in life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. And it's just um, how close we all are individually with him. And yep. anybody can do what we can do. As exactly, you mentioned. yes, yes. It's the society and the religion and other people that keep the vast majority down. Well, um, you know, the, the other thing I was going to say, it's not that, and it's also the word psychic. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, that's very derogatory. I agree, I agree. So. <laughs> you know, I tell people, when people say, are you psychic? I said, you know, I use the word psychic for marketing because yeah. it's the way that I can reach common people to help them move forward, find closure, but I'm an intuitive. Yes. Um, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have a storefront with a flashing light that says, you know, open, <laughs> with the open yeah, palm with yeah. the third eye in it. I, you know, I don't have any of that. But, you know, knock yourself out if that's what you want or do. You know, good for you. But it's, you know, that's where I really look for intuitive people, not just somebody that throws that word out there. Um, somebody that think, is, yes. Yeah, yeah, because it's a great responsibility you and I have and other people like us. It's a great responsibility, and I'm honored to have that responsibility. I take care of it. Um, I always watch it to make sure, you know, I'm not out to hurt anybody. Um, it is a lot of weight for us. But, yeah, you know, very much so. God yeah. has always said, 
God has always said he doesn't give you more than what you can handle. And so I'll handle it. (laughs) Not always, not always easy as we both know. Mm -hmm. That's, that's true, but it's really, um, being honest and truthful to yourself and your God, your creator. And that's what it's about. What would you say has been the turning point of your life in the sense we're still going through life right now, but what has been a big faith movement for you where you know, hey, God does exist and he's in our lives. What, what is it for you that stands out the most in your life? That's a tough question. Um That's a tough question because there's so many things. Well, g- give um, me an easy, whatever <laughs> comes to your mind, <laughs> or I I can give give you mine. Yeah, give me give me yours. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, what you, stands out the most, right? The, you're right. Yeah, the big God, faith mo- mover. Okay. Yes. Um, there's been time in my. A lot of times in my life that I have not had anything. I've been very poor, not exactly rich. Uh, But every moment I've been in, God has always given me his grace and gifts and love. And for one example, I don't know how complicated I should go or how simple, but I'll just give you a simple one, okay? I was coming outside and it was raining, pouring. I had no umbrella. I was walking in the area that it was raining. I needed some protection. All of a sudden, in the middle of the street, there was an umbrella that wasn't used, brand new, laying there. Now, if that wasn't, I mean, you you could say, oh, just something you found, but I believe God stepped in Mm -hmm. this case. And, 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 and gave me something to help me out, tools Mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. And then the most, like, with the people that I I have worked with that have tried to kill me, I have had God's protection to keep them out of my life to, Mm -hmm. or to learn how to forgive and move Mm -hmm. on which is a whole long story, <laughs> but to make it short, because I want right. to see if you have any stories. <laughs> well, I don't, you know, a lot of mine is not necessarily like your umbrella, but it's, you know, it's possible injuries, um, you know, cars. Um, there's just a lot of things, you know. I'm very keen and aware of, like you are, when God intervenes. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many things. Um, there's just so many things. Mm-hmm. I don't have a specific one like that, um, per se. I, I, I know, you know, one example I can get, I guess, is I was in Chicago once um, and not in the right part of town trying to get into a hotel. Um, where I couldn't find the front doors. It was the, what is it, Chevy or something like that. And um, I felt and had p- other guys around me that wanted to do harm to me um, because they knew I was lost. And God sent three maids, um, came up behind me from the parking structure and opened the door so they could go to work and let me in. And... Uh, Probably one of the biggest examples that then I knew God was watching over me. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I have one that you might get a laugh from. Um, it's like when I was in that uh, disaster for in uh, Louisiana, and I was at the hotel. Mm-hmm. I had somebody in that. Uh, I was feeling getting kind of scared for a minute. You know, kind of. Mm-hmm feeling uneasy about things. But there was this man that I met. I never saw him there again, but just that one time, uh, just a man, a dark, a black man, okay, nice. Mm-hmm. 
and he said, aren't you Richard Spassoff from K Spaz Radio? I, I liked your show. I'm looking at him. I go, okay, uh, how do you know? You know, <laughs> we're out mm-hmm. here in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and you like my show. You know, he laughed, cracked up. We said some jokes with each other. But it was, it, I, it was just such an odd experience. It was like an angelic intervention to send mm-hmm. some peace to me, right? Yes. Yes. So things like that. That just amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, all that kind of stuff. I know God is around us for sure, without a doubt. Yeah. Do you think that because we are in tune with God, we are so, you know, we are closer to God, I believe, um, because we allow Him to be closer to us. Um, do you think that we pick up on these things? more than, let's say, an average person does? Yeah, only because we know we're close to God. Mm-hmm. And we both, both, both of us, I feel from you, you have su- suffered a lot too. Mm-hmm. Pain with a lot of things, but every time God has come through for us. Yes. And that's, yeah, definitely yes on that. I agree. Right. And, and sometimes with God coming through for us, he has to let us hit the rock bottom. Yeah. <laughs> now you remind him. <laughs> yes. Yes, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but so people that go through this, you know, I, when you hear people talk bad about God and he wasn't there when they needed him, he was there. But um, it's something you had to go through, number one, and be number two because of the state that you were in. Did you discount him? Never in anything. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm talking average people do. You know, we we discount a lot. I don't because of what I've been through, like you. Mm-hmm. But you talk to a lot of people who discount that. Um, I mean, it, I, I look at it when you have a partner and you're in love with her, my, or you say a prayer before you make love. Nothing wrong with that. Or no, not at all. Whatever. Or uh, one time I was... Uh, um, they, they were putting these wires through my head to test me out if I had seizures. But before I yeah. did anything, I asked God, please, you know, help help me through this. I'm scared. Mm-hmm. And it scared the heck out of me so much that I was making a lot of jokes up that I made the doctor crack up. <laughs> At least I had an yeah. audience. But, but it, it, the, the pain was still there. But God's presence was around me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it it's, for me, it's who I am, and I accept it, I appreciate it, I'm grateful, I'm humbled, um, you know, I'm, I'm everything, um, because he's there through the good and the bad times. Yep. And, um, and so, through God's grace and his hands is allowing me to do what I do, which allows you to do what you do. And, you know, not being egotistical, I know we've made a difference in a lot of things in a lot of people's lives, and I couldn't do it without God. I agree. There's been times in my life, okay, can I share with you another example? Of course. Like, I had real, I still have bad allergies but one time I was I you used to get shots all the time okay till I was about Mm -hmm. 36 years old and anyways one time I lived in Vegas and I needed help for somebody to give me a shot because I didn't know how to do it for myself Mm -hmm. and so here I am in the casino asking people if they could give me a shot It took me about a half hour. Somebody finally came up to me. They heard, you know, what I was talking about. And they go, I'm a nurse. I live here and I dance. So, you know, she read what was going on. And she goes, sure, I'll help you out. And, uh, wow. yeah, it, it, it was just, again, divine intervention on things. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, uh. It's amazing how he's around all the time and guides us. I mean, I 
I just have this mental picture of you going around, you know, <laughs> looking for somebody to give you a shot. <laughs> if you think that was bad, when I was in the other disaster in Louisiana, I was asking these people for, uh, I, I took sleeping pills, right, at night, prescription sleeping pills. Uh -huh. And yeah. I'm asking everybody at the, at the place, you know, do you have any of these uh, sleeping pills? No, no. Well, I finally approached these biker guys. Well, they had Xanax, and that helped. <laughs> <laughs> Nor could the paramedics give them to to me because they didn't have any, and they understood. They said we don't have, we're not prepared yet. Right. And so, what I was told to do by God is go out and ask pe people, which was very odd. Yeah, yeah. But you know, but but that's the thing is that we listen to what He tells us. Yes. Uh, of course, we question it. Sometimes we're human, um, but we listen, and and that's whom we are. And that I don't, you know, I, I say it's my life, but I'm not a religious fanatic. Um, but it's just my normal is to hear and listen from him, and and to do. That's just my normal. Um, yes, and you're not talking from. A spiritual perspective, nor a religious perspective, just from your experience, mine too. That's right. Yep, that's right. Um, and so, and part of this experience is he's given us these amazing gifts, and um, I can't imagine life without them. To be honest with you, same here. But and yeah, go ahead. No, no, go. It just feels cursed. But go ahead. Sometimes, but always good. <laughs> right. It is. It is a blessing. And it is a curse. Yes. Um, we have them mixed up. But what was I going to say is that, um, you know, everybody can have what we have, but we're so trained into this society, this role, this, um, that people don't open up to accept these beautiful things that God gives them. In order to open up, though, unfortunately, there is pain that follows that. A lot of pain. A and, lot of pain. But, but so pe people know, even though there's pain, and as we both know, there's a lot of great joy through all this. Mm -hmm. Blessing and a curse. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I was going to say, too, is what? to me sometimes, you know, I love people watching. Mm -hmm. um, it entertains me. Again, because we have that little devil inside of us that our intuition's <laughs> like, I know what they're going to do. I told you. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I look at people when I'm just people watching and think, is your life boring? Because mine's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what do you have in your life? I have this sorrow, the happiness, curse, blessings. You know, and, and I just kind of look at people and wonder, is your life boring? Huh. Mine's but, not. <laughs> not at all, no. I, but I was no. going to ask you, how do you balance things out being married and mm -hmm. with the work you do? I can't do both. I need a lot of private time. Yes. You know, I am very, very blessed. I've been married for 28 years, and so she's been with me on this entire journey. You know, I need quiet time a lot, too, and she gives me that space. Okay. Um, she'll know when I need it. Um, I, again, I'm very introverted. I don't watch a lot of TV or things like that, so I'll escape into my office. Um, I'll go for a walk. I live, you know, a few miles from the beach, so the beach gives me a lot of quiet time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time, I can't meditate, but it gives me a lot of time to think and let go and receive. Um, so I'm very blessed as far as my marriage that she gives me that time. Um, and, you know, she's very good at knowing when I need that time. <laughs> yeah, when you have a hammer to our heads, so that's one indication. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> just kidding. Or just she kidding. can just tell by, you know, unfortunately, you know, I do... I am grouchy sometimes. I am irritated. <laughs> you know, and she'll pick up on those. And she'll say, hey, you need to, you know, step away from it, walk away, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm very blessed in that sense. 
The other thing is that I've done with my gifts to make it a little bit better with marriage and everything is I actually have taught myself to treat my gifts um, like a job. Right. And what I mean by that is I have a cutoff time intuitively that if something comes to me, if I feel like it's important after my cutoff time, which is 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at the latest, I'll send myself a text or I'll tell the spirit, spirit that, hey, if this is important, then you'll come back tomorrow during my waking hours. <laughs> yes, um, yes. Is what I did as far as being empathic and picking up everybody's emotions. I really had to teach that as a business to myself in the sense that, you know, we have a lot of TV shows on TV where people, psychics will go up and read people in public without their permission. You know, that's not me. That's your personal space. And I had to teach myself that I don't have a right to invade that personal space unless you're going to be injured, killed, something along those lines. So when I go out, I have taught myself that it's a business. And when I go, I have to block that energy because it's not mine. Um, I agree. And, 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 and there's been in times where I've seen people in that, um, in that space where something could occur that's not good. And and I think that's our gifts that we have to make a statement, say something. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to come out and just say you're going to be dead in four hours. No, no. But it's a matter of, hey, maybe you should go to the doctor within the next hour or so. I, I think you should check on this or, you know, but, but again, um, I just had to treat it like business. So again, my quiet time happens, but at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, I'm done. But you're I'm not, done. yeah, yeah, you're, you're able to, if you're out and about past eight o'clock, suppose you run into two pe pe people uh, mm -hmm. that you know need intervention. Yeah. Then, yeah, but you're saying you're home, you're closed, that, yeah, Absolutely. time to rest. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you have to do that, especially oh, with yes. us. When people say, oh, you know, I see these interviews and they say, oh, my, you know, I got spirit coming to me 24 7. Hmm. You need to learn how to control it. In my case, I'm going to back up where you said you used to take sleeping pills. I have to take sleeping pills yeah, because same here. I, I, I have to. And um, the other reason that I have to treat my, my gifts as a business and dealing with a lot of dark side is people that are truly intuitive, from my experience, are also depressed. Yes, Be yes. And, and so I tell people, yeah, I take antidepressants. You know, I'm very transparent. You can ask me anything you want. Do I take the antidepressants? Sure, because I deal with death all the time. Do I like to go out and people watch because they're moving and there's life? Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> uh, do I like to joke with myself with them? Yes, because I have to have my own sense of humor. Um, so... You know, when I meet people that are like, oh, I'm a psychic, huh, do you sleep at night? Oh, yeah. I know, yeah. It's... <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's start this conversation over. Do you sleep naturally at night? <laughs> um, you know, are you depressed? Uh, you know, but, you know, so again, it's um, just treating it like a gift and knowing what my cutoff time is, um, you know. The other thing I tell people is when I work on unsolved cases, um, unfortunately, with seas being seasoned like I am and seasoned like you are in your work and career, we we become callous to a lot of things where we've learned to block that emotion. We learn to block so many things that, you know, when I'm done with a file, when I close that file, I have to be done and I have to go to my personal yeah. life. Yes. Um do I have people that are around me that have passed that still hit me in the heart and the soul? Sure. Um, and you have to make peace with that. But overall, I have to come in telling myself, I pray for guidance and protection and wisdom, but I have to tell myself when I'm done with this for the day or I'm done with it for good, I have to close that file and I have to let it go. For your own sanity, um, for your well-being, exactly. Yes, yes. Exactly right. And, um, you know, and, and that's one thing if people are developing these gifts, which I think they get stronger as you get older, you have to acknowledge them. You've got to learn these little tricks. Um, and, and I think you have to learn that to survive. Exactly. And that's the, it's the curse part of it. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but for the good that we do, it overrides a curse yeah. and I'm okay with it I'm okay with it and I always have told myself 
the day that I hurt somebody intentionally, I'm not always accurate, I'm human, I'm not accurate, but the day that I intentionally hurt somebody, it's the day I don't use my gifts. It's the day I give it up. Yeah, because um, you've had it inside. You, know, you can't take anymore. Yes, yes. Right. Even if God's upset with me, if I hurt somebody, I'm done. And, you know, that's not who I am. No. Um, and that's intentionally, you know, knock on wood, I haven't hurt anybody and I don't plan on it. But, you know, these are things, like I said, this is a very precious gifts we have and they have to be taken seriously. And at the same time, we have to learn how to treat ourselves well. And I'm, I'm happy to hear you have a spouse that knows. I mean, I've been with my girlfriend for 13 years and she knows when my eyes turn red <laughs> and they glow <laughs> Get on the other side. She's out of there. <laughs> yeah, it's time to go. I'll see you later, honey. Bye. Oh, <laughs> uh, that is funny. Oh, that is funny. But she deals with your gifts pretty good, then. Yeah, but it's been hard for. It's hard. I don't know. Is your my girlfriend has a hard time with me? It's but she loved loves me. But I'm sure everybody that is the way that we are. And that's true right. within themselves. Mm -hmm. They, It's not an easy thing. Mm -mm. Well, I come from my wife's side of the family, which is pastor's daughter, pastor brother, very religious. Um, I have some of her family that don't like what I do and avoid me. Mm -hmm. It's okay, right? Whatever. Right, right. And then I have part of it that is very thankful what I did. But really what made me very comfortable in what I was doing is when I first started using my gifts, my wife's brother, who's the pastor, said, you know, didn't know what I did, explained to him what I did, walked him through some cases. And he said, you know, I have to tell you that um, what I told him before I say what he told me is I said, you know, 90 percent, 95 percent, 98 percent of my readings with people involve religion because people ask me all yep. the time how could God do this to them, their yeah. child, etc. Mm -hmm. So we discuss religion. And so my brother-in-law said to me, he goes, you discuss religion enough that I would say that you are ministering God's Word. Yes, exactly. But you do it in a different way. Yeah. And when he told me that, it took me a few minutes. You know, I got it right away, but it took me a few minutes to ponder that and go, you know, he is correct because... It is bringing in religion. My gifts are God-given, and I'll tell you that. And um, and we do talk about religion. We talk about, like you and I did, uh, yes. you know, how can we do this? Or we talk about when somebody's, you know, I get a lot of parents of suicide yep. victims, yep. children. And why could God do this? And then it goes into the religion side of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't blame God. Exactly, blah, yes. Blah. And so... That is really what made me the most comfortable in doing what I'm doing, is when he just said, I'm ministering God's Word, but just in a different way. Exactly. And like me with you, I think the same way we both get, we don't want hard times, but when they do come, we get stronger in our faith. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't leave. Mm -hmm. One thing I never left was God, that never will. No. And I, between you and me, I admire people. <laughs> People like Joan of Arc, um, pe people that have the love in their heart that have been through hell. I don't want to be there. <laughs> no, but we have been. Yes, in different ways. Yes, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. we have been. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have been. I guess and so, yeah. In a diff yeah, yeah. You and I have seen, as you mentioned in the beginning, we've seen heaven and hell. Yeah. We've been through heaven and hell. Um, and Real I tell people that and on I'm, earth, yeah. Go, go, yes. go yeah. Um, you know, and, and what makes us good at what we do is because we have been on both sides. And when people, you know, I love when people ask me what I think heaven is. I love when people ask me that. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I'm happy to tell them. And I'm happy to tell them, excuse me. Allergies. I'm happy to tell them um, from my experience and what I believe it is, what I feel it is. Um, 
and then I can also tell them what hell is. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, and the other thing that I have to be truthful with the people that I read, and this, look, if somebody comes to me for a reading, mm-hmm. I may not always be the rah, rah, happy, happy, your life's going to be beautiful. Right. Um, because I have to tell you what comes through from God, which is the truth from me. It may yeah. not be your truth. Mm-hmm. But it's my truth. And um, so when we discuss this heaven and hell, I tell you the truth from my truth, from what I've been through, what I've experienced, what I've seen, um, my conversations with God, etc. Um, and that's where I have to come from. So I think if you're truly intuitive, um, you have to have experienced it all. And, and I haven't experienced it all, obviously, but experienced enough on both sides right. to really know. Um, and we carry a lot of weight, which we all do, still do. Even in this conversation, I feel a lot of weight on me. Um, I know, yes. Yeah, because we hit to the heart of things, I was just going to say. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I have broad shoulders, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> And, uh, you know, God's with me, so I'll get rid of it. But, you know, if there were more people like us, true people like us, it would be a much better world. Yeah. It'd be, yep. And mm-hmm. I know me and you bump into a lot of pe- pe- people like us. Let's define a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see, maybe out of 100 people, two of them. <laughs> there you go, bingo. You're right on that one, bingo. You know, I um, because I like to to meet people. I do um, private readings at a bookstore here in Venice, California, right. and um, you know, I'm not better than anybody else, nor will I ever be. But you know, it's even a struggle for me to go in there and see my clients because, like you said, out of a hundred people, maybe two. Yeah, and um, and it's the same way there, and. You know, it uh, it weighs on me a lot when I go there. Um, but again, I'm there to help people. Um, and I'm supposed to be there because God put me there. I don't understand completely why I'm supposed to be there. But right now, I'm making a difference. And that's all that matters. Um, most of the people that are there are into tarot cards. Um I'm not a tarot card guy. I'm not either. Yes, yes. I, to me personally, I, and I'll tell anybody this, I think it's a little bit on the dark side. I agree. I think people learn what these cards mean and can put it into any situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so the people that I work with, and, and none of them have taken me up on this challenge, but I'll say to them, why don't you try to do a reading without your cards? to see if you really have the gifts. And there are 12 other people there, mm-hmm. and nobody has taken me up on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, I'm one that I don't use anything when I do reading. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's through mm-hmm. God. You know, and so I don't get as many readings as these other people do. Mm-hmm. But as I tell people, I'm not here for entertainment value. I'm here to help you with something of substance, something that really means something that can help you. Um, that's what I'm here for. I'm not here for the card tricks. And, um, you know, I can't tell you your life's going to be perfect and happy-go-lucky. I, sometimes I can't. Yeah. Um, and I'm not supposed to. And if you want that, yeah, there you go. There's 12 other people here. Yeah. So, you know, people like you and I, I think we, we're not, we're different. Yeah. But I'm fine with that. Um, it's just, I guess, our ethics and our morals and our standing with God um, make us different. And and I'm okay with that. I'm fine I'm with good. that, too. It's just hard, though, mm-hmm. at times. And <laughs> uh, there's times I've been in, in a comedy store and tell pe- pe- people when I do my stand-up what I do. You know, mm-hmm. like I'm a psychic me- me- medium. Well, bad taste right there. Used to work for the mafia. Well, bad taste there. <laughs> Half the audience gets up. 
<laughs> hey, I'm clearing the energy. No, I'm just kidding. Now. Yeah, yeah, I love. Yeah, I said come watch one of your shows. We'd have a great time. Oh my gosh, we clear that room pretty quick, wouldn't we? <laughs> Bring in some good people, exactly. Oh gosh. Well, yeah. <laughs> Troy, I really appreciate you being here. But why don't we give everybody your wet website, and then we we, we could okay. close unless you have any words of wisdom to give. No, I just want to thank you for the time. It's been a really fun interview, and that's nice and refreshing. Thank you. My uh, website <laughs> is, of course, Medium Troy. So it's psychicmediumtroy.com is uh, where my website's at. You'll find more about me. You'll learn more about my background. And um, I appreciate comments, good, bad. Um, want to say hi, just drop me a line. I appreciate it all. Troy, I appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. I would love for you to be a guest again. Uh, that would be awesome. I'm <laughs> always here if you need me. Th hang on, and we'll close up. I'd like to wish everybody a wonderful evening. God bless you wherever you are in this world, and may God's grace be with you always. Have a wonderful e e evening. Oh, you've been listening to the Richard Spassoff Show. I almost forgot to say that. With our guest, <laughs> Troy Griffin, a psychic Christian psychic me medium. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Hold on there. <laughs> From the dead of night, peering through the veil of darkness, the paranormal, spiritual, and comedic abound. Welcome to the Richard Spazoff Show. Oh. And information, join us online. I'm sorry, I'll put that in later on. That was the wrong one. <laughs> oh boy, hey, well, yeah, thanks for having me on. That was awesome. That was